In this video, we are going to learn about basic response of process control systems. They are dead time and lag. Here is a schematic diagram of a process control system. It shows a controller and the process being controlled as black boxes. Output of the controller is fed to the process input, while output of the process is fed back to the controller's input. Here is an example of process response in a simple process control system. The red curve represents controller's output, while the blue curve represents process variable. It starts with a change of controller's output, which is followed by some change of process value, after some delay. The process value keeps changing, approaching a final steady state value. The time elapsed after controller's output changes, until process value starts to change, is called dead time. Lag time is defined as time elapsed after process value starts to change, until reaching around 0.63 of total change of process value. In the next slides, we will demonstrate simulation of dead time and lag in a process control system. The simulation is done in discrete time, like what is usually found in digital controllers, such as DCS and PLC. It starts with a change of controller's output, which is fed to process input. It will cause some changes in the value of process parameter which are then read by the controller in the next controller's cycle time. To make it accessible to wider range of audience, it is done using a spreadsheet software. Let's start the simulation with the easiest part, which is dead time. We need three columns to track time in seconds, controller's output or process input, and delayed input. The numbers in bold are constants, while the numbers in italic are result of formulas. For a starter, let's make the dead time zero by filling the cells in third column with formula referring to the cells in second column of the same row. An XY scatter chart can be added beside the table to plot the trend. With zero second dead time, both curves are overlapping. To simulate three seconds of dead time, three zeros are inserted to the top rows of third column. The next rows refer to the cells in second column, starting from the top. The formula can be copied to the cells below it. In the chart, we can see the orange curve is shifted right by three units, while maintaining its shape. Before simulating lag, we want to introduce you to a similar concept with simpler formula called moving average. In the simplest form, the new process value is the average between its previous value and the new process input. Both of them contribute equally to the result. The next step is to make the contribution of previous value and the new process input adjustable. We can call it weighted moving average. This can be achieved by replacing the denominator, which is previously a constant in the formula, i.e. 2, with a reference to a cell in column E. The weight of the previous process value is kept at 1, while the weight of the new process input equals to the denominator minus 1. This makes the total weight equals denominator. This new formula can then be copied to all cells below it. The result should stay the same. Every second elapsed, the process value gets closer to the process input leaving half the difference from previous second. Now let's change the denominator to 3. The result is that process value approaches process input quicker. Previous process value only contributes one third of the new process value, while the other two third comes from the new process input. Now we are getting close to the concept of lag. Let's change the denominator to the natural number E, which can be done by typing the built-in formula EXP. The result is a curve having one second lag time. At 1 second, the process value gets to around 63.2% of input change. To simulate different lag time, we need to replace the formula for denominator to incorporate the cells in fourth column. Now the curve shows a process having 4 seconds lag time. At 4 second, the process value gets to around 63.2% of input change. Here is the chart showing a combination of dead time and lag in a process. Now we have learned two distinct type of process delay, which is very crucial in understanding a process control system. Here is a sample to show dead time and lag in a process control system. Downstream temperature of flowing hot water being regulated by heater. Sudden increase of heater's power takes time to reach sensor. The sensor is blind to the change before the heated water flows through it. This produces dead time. 
it takes additional time to gradually heat up the equipment and pipeline. This produces lag. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.